Can you talk about the climate right now in Boston and your major concerns about this trial? Right. Well, I mean, I think the key here is whether this is going to be a trial that's about vengeance or that it's going to be a trial about justice. Uh, are we going to be ruled by our values or are we going to be ruled by our fears? Um, the climate here in Boston is a, a media circus, as you can imagine. Um, it's sort of 24-7 around this trial. Uh, it's where everybody's focus is, uh, just as it was where everyone's focus was during the lockdown, uh, the shelter-in-place order that came out in the days immediately following the bombing. Um, and that's one of the reasons that the ACLU and others have a lot of concerns about the due process, whether there can, in fact, be a fundamentally fair trial uh, for Jokar Sarnayev. Um, because it a test here, this isn't just a test or a trial of his guilt or innocence. It's really a test of whether we as Americans are going to let people who would use violence shake us from our values, shake us from our commitment to due process, to fundamental fairness, and to the American system of justice. Um, and I think that's what's at stake right now. Well, Carol, uh, let's go through your concerns. Talk about the death penalty in a state that bars capital punishment. Right. Well, so Massachusetts um, has is, is a non-death penalty state. So this is a federal trial. So the federal government, Eric Holder's decision, uh, is to come in here and pursue a death penalty trial nonetheless. What that means is that when you're trying to qualify a jury, it has to be death qualified is what it's called, or death certified. That means they'll be asking every juror uh, whether or not they're opposed to the death penalty. And, and if they are uh, fundamentally opposed to the death penalty, they'll be kicked off the, the case. They can't serve on the jury. So what does that mean when you want to have a jury of your peers when you're in a state where, in general, the peers are opposed to the death penalty, um, but we're going to have a jury that's death qualified? So that's just one of the many due process concerns that have been raised. Well, Carol uh, Rose, and unfortunately, tell us what yes. that means. I mean, who ends up being on a death penalty jury? Who gets excluded? Who gets included? Right. Well, there's going to be a series of questions um, that will be asked of every juror. And if, if a juror is said, do you, could you possibly, are you opposed to the death penalty on religious mm -hmm. grounds in all instances, you will not be on the jury, but it will be the judge that makes that decision. So it won't be the prosecutors having to use one of their peremptory challenges to get that person off the jury. And so in um, terms of populations, uh, for example, African-Americans overwhelmingly against the death penalty, uh, Jews overwhelmingly women. against the death penalty, women. So who ends up on uh, pro-death penalty juries? Well, studies have shown that you have a far more—not only—so the, the trial is bifurcated. There's the guilt phase, and then there's the sentencing phase. But studies have shown that when you have a death-qualified jury, then you end up having a lot more people who are likely to find them guilty in the, in the guilt-finding phase, in addition to imposing the death penalty down the road. Um, so you are— in, in this case, you're more likely to have a jury not only to find a, have a finding of guilty, but also to be willing to impose the death penalty than would a general representative jury that represents the people of Massachusetts. It could be that the prosecutors want to be part of a high-profile case and tap into this sense of tremendous anger and um, uh, a feeling of a desire for vengeance that's very widespread in Boston right now. People are really traumatized by what happened, which is one of the reasons it's a problem about getting a fair jury trial in Boston, because people are traumatized by it. Um, so there's a number of reasons, uh, sort of political reasons, that they would have decided to go forward. But the problem with that is that if you have if there had been a plea trial, then the first part of the trial, the guilt or innocence part, wouldn't happen. You would only have the sentencing phase. And during a sentencing phase, when there's been a plea like that, in general, the, the defendant doesn't really talk. It's really about the survivors. It's about the people who've come forward, like the person we just heard from, uh, to be able to tell their stories and to be able to talk about the healing process and to move forward. When instead the prosecution chooses to pursue a death penalty trial, First, we have to relive every last detail of what happened and go through all of that, which can be re-traumatizing for people who are survivors and for all of us. But beyond that, during the sentencing phase, it's really going to be about Yokar Sarnayev. It's going to be about his youth, who he was influenced by, whether or not he did too many drugs, whether or not his big brother influenced him, what a good guy he was at the high school. It's going to be about him, as it should be in those cases, because it's his life on the line. 
but it won't be about the survivors. Um, and therefore, there's a real chance that if you pursue this, you're going to create a martyr of Yokor Sarnayev among people who uh, somehow decide that he's the person they want to back. It, he could be an inspiration uh, to people around the world who would also use violence uh, as a way to achieve their means or to make their statements in America. And it really is a setback for what we as Americans want, which is to move forward, to have healing, and to have justice rather than vengeance. And Carol Rose, the issue of moving the venue uh, Timothy McVeigh was tried in Colorado, is that right, not in Oklahoma? That's right. Um, in, a, in, a, in a case that was very similar, it was an indiscriminate bombing. There were children killed and hurt in both instances. The whole city uh, and surrounding area was really traumatized emotionally by it. Uh, and the judge in that case, I think correctly, said, you know, it's important that, especially in these cases that are so political and high visibility, that we as Americans set the highest standards of due process, that we prove to people who would use violence that we won't be deterred from our values, from our system of justice. We will go over and above to make sure there's a fair trial. And that's why, in the Timothy McVeigh case, they moved the trial out of state. He was still convicted, but there was no doubt that he had a fair trial. The concern here is if you don't do that, there's going to be multiple issues for appeal. There's going to be a perception, either in the country and certainly internationally, that somehow Yoko Sarnayev didn't get a fair trial, and therefore there's going to be delays in any execution. And beyond that, we're going to be living with it for years to come and have the real sad danger of the possibility of turning this guy who used violence against so many people uh, into a martyr. And, and that's a shame. Mm -hmm.